Welcome to the Cozy Little Library today with your Clean Reads book buddy. Today I'm talking about all the books that I read in October, the four I DNF'd, all the readathons that I completed, lots of Christian fiction, lots of clean fiction, even Christian fantasy, lots of middle grade. So let's go! We're going to start with the Middle Earth Readathon, then go to the Journey Through the Bible Readathon, then what I read for Victober. And as I go through each one and I'm giving you the book review, I will put what prompt that I am feeling for that book. I'm going to discuss why I DNF the books that I did. Lady at Willow Grove Hall by Sarah E. Ladd. It is book number three in the Whispers on the Moor series, but they are standalones. I do have book number two that I am saving for wintertime mood reading. The tagline says, her secret cloaks her in isolation and loneliness. His secret traps him in a life that is not his own. It's in Regency era. It's a Christian historical fiction. This one does have faith content. Our main character, Cicely, has a twin sister and they live with their blacksmith father in a little cottage. Chapter one was so good and exciting. Cicely is the wilder of the two girls. They're 16 when this story starts and she's getting in a little bit of trouble and you're kind of with her. You're just kind of pulled right into the story. She's sneaking around and it's a little heart pounding. Bill? Why are you sneaking around? Is the dad going to find out? Because he's pretty scary. Chapter two, we're right in the middle of the world at the same time, but in a different part of England, our main male character, his dad is telling him a huge secret. Chapter three, for both of our main characters, it's five years later. Um, at the top of the stairs, Mrs. Trent turned to Cicely and met her gaze directly and said, I am sure that I will be the first to tell you that things and people are not always as they seem. You have not been at Willow Grove long, Miss Fair. There are secrets within these walls. Ghosts locked behind the doors. You need not know my reasons, just heed my words. There is another male character that is of interest of her to her, and our male character also has a lady interest, but it's not a true like love triangle. Very good book, four stars. Fulfilling prompt number two and number nine is A Lady of Esteem by Christiane Hunter. This is in the Hawthorne House series. So the uncle that is has been taking care of her kind of as a ward, he's very, very absent-minded, and she is just kind of pushed to the wayside. She eventually is sent to London, and that's how she meets the Hawthorne family. But a friend that she gets involved with, he has one of my favorite quotes in the book. He has had a very, we'll say a rugged past, and he's trying to change his ways, and he's trusting God, and he says he was attempting to prove to himself and God that he was indeed a new creation that the Bible said he was. There's no profanity in this. This is Christian historical fiction, Regency era. Love this book. Five stars. The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien, published in 1937, a fantasy, of course. I consider it a classic, but I love the beginning of this story. I love Bilbo Baggins, his lifestyle, all cozy and quiet and comfortable. Two breakfasts a day, yes, in front of the fire. And I love how he's like, good morning. We don't want any adventures here. Thank you, though. Thank you. Not today. <laughs> not I suggest you try over the hill or... Yes, that's me. I'll just be over here. I'll have the fire ready when y'all get back and the coffee and the tea. Y'all y'all go have your adventures. So I loved him. I loved the beginning. And then, of course, Gandalf shows up. Love him, but he did kind of mess up the cozy vibe. And don't hate me. It just it, It's just not my thing. I hope you don't hate me. Trigger-wise, war, fighting, death. I had this hardcover, and I also had the Audible audiobook. Got it for free. So that really helped as I was trying to get through the long war series there. <sighs> Three stars. A Game of Hearts by Joanna Barker. The tagline says, if you can't join them, 
beat them. What? What are you laughing about? This is such a wonderful book. It is historical romance. It's in the Regency era. Obviously, it's about archery, which I think is very cool and very fun. I like archery. However, I went into this thinking that I would not be that into it. Wrong, wrong, wrong. I was so invested in this story. It really helped me get out of my world and into this one, and oh, did I. And I should have known it would be really good because a new author, that I love is Joanna Barker. And now that I have read this book, I want to read everything that she has written. Mary Gold has one goal to beat Tristan, her longtime rival on the archery field. He has a little bit of an advantage. Not only is he really good, but he's part of a bowman's society for archers, but it's only for men. They won't let women in. True enemies to more. They are such rivaled enemies. Their banter, though, is hilarious. It's not that they miscommunicate. Some things happen and she misinterprets. And Tristan has so many things going on stress-wise that nobody knows about because he's so good at just being, you know, nobody sees his emotions. But this is so cute, so interesting. I was rooting for both of them. It was sweet. It was clean. It was romantic. A little bit about women's equality without going overboard, if you know what I mean. Love this book so much. It's book one in The Cartwells. And I cannot wait to go forward in this series. Loved it so much. Five stars. A Lady Most Engaged by Audrey Glenn. It says a grim Regency tale. You know, grim fairy tales. Classic. And look at this cover. It's on KU, and there's a whole series of these. I took a chance on this one because I did not know the author. And at the beginning, I was a little concerned because the way the story looked like it was going, it was very cute. It is a Sleeping Beauty retelling. Now, our unlikely hero, who is a most eligible bachelor at this party, but you see his horrible mother, how domineering and how ridiculous she is, what he was really made of and what his heart was about. This was very cute, very sweet. Four stars. Morgan and I have been reading through the American Girl books month by month. Our first month we read Felicity's story. Thank you, Miss Cole. I shall take no tea which was the Revolutionary Era. Then we read Addie's books, which was Civil War. And this month, it was Kit's turn. For your heart, like so. Book number one is Meet Kit. She's from the 1930s, Great Depression Era. Book number two is the one that actually fits the prompt for the Middle Earth. Kit learns a lesson. Book number three is always the Christmas story of the American Girl. Book four is the birthday book. Book five is Kit Saves the Day. I got these books from all over the state on library loans because I do not own Kit somehow. Changes for Kit, a winter story. What I love about Kit is that she's very sharp, very smart. She's energetic, but she's not only practical, but she's also has a heart for news and writing. She's got the, a lot of creativity. She's really passionate about the things that she loves, like her family and the news. I especially enjoyed how comfortable she is with herself. She's a little bit quirky, like she's a little unusual. And while she does get embarrassed about some things, having to deal with the repercussions of the Great Depression and the changes that that brings on her, one of the quotes in book number Number one, her best friend's very prissy, very girly girly, and very wealthy. And she's like, but oh, your mom redid your room and it's beautiful. And Kit's like, yeah, it's okay, but it's a little too pink. I'd rather sleep in a tree house like Robin Hood. I think that's the coolest thing. <coughs> Anyway, enjoyed all of these. There was only one that I gave two stars because I didn't like Kit's attitude and how she dealt with some things, but all the other books I gave four stars. Very enjoyable. The Silent Governess by Julie Clausen, definitely the winner of the most prized book of October. Absolutely beautiful. I've always wanted to read this. Been curious because of this cover. 
Julie Clausen is a read to zero author for me. I'd love to read all of her books. I will say, you'll see what my rating is at the end of this, but this was not one of my favorite books by her. I will just say from the start, there was a little bit too much violence. Several of the things were unrealistic, but they're the faith. It's historical Christian fiction, and Julie Clausen does have faith in her books. I don't remember there being as much faith as there is nowadays with her, which is great. It's like her faith content has increased, where some authors, theirs have decreased, I think because of the publishers that they're with. But this is Bethany House, so you're going to get the faith content. By the time she gets to page 50, when we get to page 50 with her, she's been through like five or six scrapes. She's literally at the very beginning, excitingly, it's exciting to read. She's fleeing into the woods from a situation. Trigger-wise, it's domestic violence. It kind of happens off page before we get there in the story. However, it's talked about a little bit. That wasn't bad. So this is the other trigger. She is mistakenly put into a prison cell. It's only four or five sentences, but it's terrifying. I hated that part. It's not sexual assault. But anyway, after that, we get into her story where she goes to a manor to work. The main male character is not my favorite. He was very wishy-washy. The other thing about this book that I thought was a little odd is that whether they were staff or whether they were wealthy, several weird situations where all of a sudden somebody would come out of the shadows and try to kiss her. And I was like, I don't know. It just seems so silly, like it didn't belong in this story. It's a little crazy. Why didn't I kiss her? Lots of secrets and scandal and all kind of things happening in the manor. I still gave it four stars. This one, I'm going to talk about the last three of the Hawthorne House books that I read in October. They all have that mentorship in them. So book number three, An Uncommon Courtship. This is Trent's story. This is the youngest brother of the four Hawthorne siblings. There's two girls and two boys. So Trent is the youngest guy, and I was looking so forward to his story because of all the siblings, he's my favorite. He's lighthearted. Nothing gets him down. He has the best attitude no matter what. And he's the one pulling out the dry jokes in the midst of stressful situations. Cracked me up like I laughed out loud in so many of the books. Trent's audiobook was by a different narrator, like it felt so disconnected from the rest of the series, and nothing out of the way. It's historical Christian fiction, lots of faith, wonderful faith. Trent, though, does look up. His ultimate mentor is his big brother, Griffith, and Griffith is a great one to emulate after. And so Griffith's book is number four, An Inconvenient Beauty. Because of some things that happened to him early on, he has decided, I will never be in the position where I have to rely on somebody else, you know, following their lead. Just, he is by the book. He's solid in business and his dukedom and his faith. Like he is like a rock. And he's also like a brick house. Like it's mentioned in many of the books. He's not overweight at all, but he is broad. He is huge. He's tall. Very domineering looking. I wouldn't say soft on the inside, but his faith is just incredible. He's quiet. He's like a gentle giant. When he goes to try to find a wife as the oldest, and he's a duke, so he has all this pressure on him to find a wife. He goes about finding a wife the same way he's gone about business and all these other things. He doesn't see any difference in it, and it kind of gets him in a few pickles. He also has some that he looks up to as well. And then book number five, A Return to Hawthorne House, is how their mom, a widow, becomes Lady Blackstone. That was really cool to read to kind of wrap up their story. The other novella that's in that book is about a couple of the staff. I didn't think I was going to like it, but I did enjoy it. I'll go through all the books just so there's no confusion. But the first book is A Lady of Esteem, and it is a girl who becomes Miranda's best friend, and Miranda's story is book number one. Book number two is Sister Georgina's story. And then Trent Griffith, the mom and the staff. Faith content is top notch. Two of them have gotten five stars and all the other ones got four stars except Trent's getting three. Highly, highly, highly recommend this series.
Wormwood Abbey by Christina Bear, book number one in the Secrets of Ormdale series. Our female main character is Edith Worms. Now, let me start by saying that I did enjoy this. This is a Christian fantasy, but it's unlike anything that I have ever read before, and it's honestly very hard to put into words. At the same time, I really don't want to say too much because, especially the part about the mythical creatures and the Gothic Abbey, I went into it not knowing hardly anything thing and it was that part was so enjoyable and I buddy read this with Miriam and we both agreed that we want to go on and read book number two because it is interesting enough we just want to know what happens next you know however the main character Edith this Victorian clergyman's daughter she spoke in first person so somehow that was very disconnecting I didn't feel connected to her but I think also because I didn't like her attitude she was very self-absorbed and kind of full of herself and I didn't enjoy that and there was one thing that she said or she thought near the very beginning that was really off-putting to me and she never redeemed herself really through the rest of it. I mean she did some good things. The other characters, her parents are amazing. The talks that they have her and her dad about literary references, wonderful. There were jokes. All of that was amazing. Still gave it four stars and I'm really hoping that I come around and like Edith from here on out. I think there are already five books in the series. There was just like one sentence that described how a couple of the relatives passed away. I didn't enjoy the wording of that, but besides that, you know, there's some death. Maybe you'll like Edith more than me. If you have read this, please let us know in the comments below. Did you like Edith or do you feel like I do about her? Four stars. Mistletoe Season is a book of three different Christmas stories. I had the advanced reader ebook and the audiobook, so I was able to do both simultaneously, and that was really fun. So, one story from Sheila Roberts, one story from Kathleen Fuller, and one story from Pepper Basham. All three were super lighthearted, hallmarkish, wholesome, and sweet. Now, Pepper Basham's The Mistletoe Prince did have faith content, and you can read it whether or not you have read her Skamar series, but if if you have read Loyally Luke, then I think you will really enjoy this one even more because the princess that is in Loyally Luke, this is her brother, and he's been sent to North Carolina to Luke and Ellie because he's been a bit of a bad boy, and I think he's supposed to just get his act together there in North Carolina, so that was really, really cute. I enjoyed that one so much. It was over way too fast. Four stars. Now, the other two are very great contemporary fiction as well. They are both second chance romance and I enjoyed both of them very much. Three stars for each of them. The Mysteries of Hawthorne Hall by Mindy Burbage Strunk, book number one in the Hidden Riches series. Now, don't get this confused with the Hawthorne House series by Christy Ann Hunter. This is completely different. This is clean Regency romance, and there is adventure, and it's action-packed. The tagline is, she doesn't trust him, but he is the only one who can save her. Our main character is not accepted in the maids and the servants around her. Then some things happen and she's thrust into society, but she's not accepted there either. The place she goes to and now owns, the staff does not accept her. And then a crazy wild man breaks into her house and fortunately a handsome groom out from the stables is there to kind of save her or at least she thinks he's there to save her. They decide to start hunting the diamonds together and all through the story, you're not really sure, is he telling the truth? Is he not telling the truth? And she He's doing the same thing. I really loved how the beginning of this started out and then even some of the adventure and the action that started happening. But honestly, the lies that he told and he just continued to tell until the very end, he never really told her the truth. Although there was a lot of action happening, it got a little bit boring. I'm sorry. So I gave this one three stars. Danger in the Darkest Hour by Mary Pope Osborne. This is a middle grade. This was fabulous. It is a magic treehouse book, and it says that it's the first of the super editions in the Magic Treehouse series. There are 28 listed in the front of this book, and this one is 
it says a super addition. Maybe because it says that it's the most dangerous Magic Treehouse mission ever by Jack and Annie, our main heroes of the story, who are able to touch the words or the picture of a destination back in history and the magic tree house swirls around and takes them to that destination and they're able to do good on their mission there. It also has several pages of facts about World War II in the back, which is really, really great. This is wonderful for middle grade age, but especially too for adults. Knowing what we know about World War II and those major points, D-Day and all the different things that we've read about World War II, seeing how this author puts this more in the perspective for kids. The illustrations are wonderful and it doesn't shy away from you know, what happens to the Jewish people and who is responsible and so forth. However, it's not in a gruesome way. It's just matter of fact, but it is fabulous. Four stars. Sir Andrew and the Authoress, book number three in the Clairvoy Castle Romances by Sally Britton, another new favorite author. I read the first two of these and adored them. Book number one was very autumn-esque and I love that and I could tell that each book was published and it's very sequential with the seasons. Being a mood reader, I only read with the season, like whatever's going on. And I knew this one was from the springtime, but there was a very stressful day and I really wanted to go forward. I needed something light and fun and I was ready to get back into this world. So I had the KU book on my Kindle and I also listened to the audiobook. This book was so delightful, like the others. Wonderful. I was able to read it that day very quickly. For well, this one was an enemies to more story and just charming. Loved it so much. Five stars. I have completed the Middle Earth Readathon and Journey Through the Bible Readathon prompts. Yay! Let's talk about our DNFs. The first one being the Bookish Bandit. I completely picked this one up because of the cover. Then when I researched it, I saw that it was supposed to be Christian contemporary fiction. I don't read contemporary very often, but I was very excited about this one especially the Christian aspect and also that our main female character has written a manuscript about her parents who she has lost and she doesn't end up publishing it. However, she goes into a store where she is and happens to see her story in a published book. So without thinking it through, she heads to the big city to find out what in the world our main male character works for the publisher. So you can kind of see where this is going, but I was so curious as to how in the world her story got published without her permission. And so I was going along with the story and I won't really get into it because spoilers. However, I will say that I DNF'd it because the male character was carrying on with a lie that got bigger and bigger and bigger. And he just kept literally lying to her face over and over and over. And after a while, it just got to be too much. I just was like, this is so ridiculous. So I'm sure it's a great story. I, I was invested for quite a while, but when he just kept on and on with the lies, I just let it go. DNF number two is Pumpkin Everything. Now let me start right here and say that this book is probably fine. What I got to when I DNF'd was not inappropriate. However, I had a stack of books that I definitely wanted to read that I knew were squeaky clean or Christian. And this was just kind of like a wild card. So let me explain. I love the premise. It's about a main female character going back home to help her grandpa. He has this store called Pumpkin Everything. I saw where everybody was saying, okay, it's clean. It's not Christian, but it's clean romance. And there was a Hallmark movie made over it. So I was really enjoying the beginning of it. Talked about teen romance, if you know what I mean, and maybe some mistakes that are made. Uh, it was done very well. But as it got to the midpoint, there was a part where our main female character made the mention that she did some things to make sure that the guy she was involved with, there was no chance that the girl he was going on a date with, that she would spend the night with him. So I stopped. 
That's why I DNF that one. DNF number three, I truly feel so bad about because it's Dickens. <laughs> what the Dickens? And I do mean Dickens. It's going on here. <laughs> Charles Dickens wrote the Pickwick Papers as more of a serialized situation. It was his first job. I believe he was a journalist and he was able to start writing this story more kind of like how we get a weekly or daily newspaper and magazines. That's kind of how this situation was working back then. He got hired to write this story that would come out in little serial snippets. And I was very curious about his first work, his first published work. Once I started, I realized how long, how extremely long this story was. And I was like, uh oh. However, I was like, I'm going to give it a go. And I was really very far into it. I was not enjoying it. It was very boring. I'm sorry. But it was. And when it got to a part where there was someone talking about doing harm to a horse, this is my cue. I'm out. So I feel so bad, though, because classics I adore. And I did not want to DNF a classic. And DNF number four, if you've been here any time, you know I am reading through the Nancy Drew, the old school Nancy Drew books. I happened to see a Nancy Drew Diaries book, and it looked cute, and it was about the mystery of Mystic Lake or something, and I had a feeling, I mean, I knew it was more modern than what I currently am reading. Nancy Drew nostalgia from my childhood. I didn't realize how modern. I was just maybe a couple chapters in, and when one of the girls started talking about the runway show on TV, fashion show, I was like... I'm out. So yeah, I just didn't even waste my time. I was curious, nothing against the book or the author. I'm sure they're great, but not the nostalgia that I was going for. One more book that I wanted to read just to say that I participated in Victober. I read Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. It was published during the Victorian era. And I wanted to do a reread because I remembered not really liking the story. I read it again. I really gave it a good, <laughs> good shot. But I am just not in love with this story. I just don't. And I do not want to give low stars to a classic. But I'm going to have to say it's a little too, a little too quirky for me. And I didn't like how for a children's book, Off With Their Heads and all that stuff. And not just that. It really went into like execution and, and just over and over and over. So repetitive, way too long, didn't enjoy it. So I'm so sorry as a classic, but I'm gonna have to give you two stars. I'm so sorry, truly I am. If you have made it to the end of this video, please give me a coffee cup emoji. Thank you so much for being here and hanging out with me talking about all of these books. Everything you need will be linked in the description below from co-hosts to readathons to books to my Patreon, all the things. So check all that out below and until next time.